I think it's finally time that we address the whale in Atlas. With it recently being confirmed in the last episode of Talk Kruby to Me that Volume 8 is only going to take place over a matter of hours, maybe two days at most, this means that Big Richard over here is only going to have a matter of hours to live. After we just meet him, he's going to die very soon, because I do think it's very likely that this giant grim whale is going to die. It is possible that, you know, Salem could just ride off into the sunset on this whale after all said and done in Atlas but I don't think that's going to be the case. She's probably going to win. Atlas is probably going to be destroyed, brought to the ground. That's almost a guarantee because the staff of creation is going to be removed from its vault one way or another, whether it requires the maiden powers or whether Salem's magic can bypass that or simply smashing Atlas into the ground is going to bypass that entirely as well. We will have to wait and see. Regardless though, Richard is probably going to die. And let's talk about how that might happen. What possibilities are out there? Now, when it comes to whale hunting, obviously you would think maybe a giant harpoon or a very strong harpoon would be what's needed. And uh, if, only, if only we had one of those in Atlas. Well, kinda maybe we do. The Staff of Creation itself. Now, if... The Grim, being a creature of destruction, is coming into contact with something that is supposedly pure creation, then maybe that might do the trick. And if Penny is able to get to the vault and get the relic of creation, the staff, I could definitely see a scene, and I would love to see a scene or someone do a comic strip of this or something, of Penny grabbing the staff and just like putting Excalibur into the stone, slamming it into the whale's head, and the power of creation just pumping all of that energy into this whale, and then it just exploding. That would be one way of doing it, though very risky, considering Salem's riding the whale, and, um, well, she's right there. If the Staff of Creation is brought right to her, probably not a good choice, similarly, if bringing a maiden right to Salem, so things are going to be a bit tricky in that regard, and I honestly don't think that that's how Richard is going to die, but it's something I would definitely like to see in some aspect or another. But the Staff of Creation definitely could play a huge role in how this whale is going to die. First of all, there's of course the whale that's floating, and Atlas that is currently floating, and the joystick that's piloting Atlas is the Staff of Creation. So, if someone was to gain access to the staff, whether it's Penny or whether Ironwood is able to in some way, shape, or form, or what have you, they could easily just joystick Atlas and slam it into the whale. If everyone in Atlas is going to die anyways, you may as well try to take the whale down with them. Though with everyone evacuating Mantle into Atlas already, this is going to be problematic in its own right. A lot of things are going to happen in these matter of hours that Volume 8 is going to take place over. But I could definitely see Atlas being used as a weapon to slam into the whale, and that would be something, depending on how fast Atlas is moving and the contact that it makes, etc., dealing a lot of damage, possibly enough to kill the whale. But the most likely scenario, I think, for how this giant whale is going to die is from the inside. I already made a video, well, multiple videos actually, mentioning about the Pinocchio inspirations for this giant grim whale. With Pietro being based off of Geppetto, Penny herself being based off of Pinocchio, there is a whale in the Pinocchio story called, well, in the Disney films, it's Monstro, but the terrible dogfish in the original Pinocchio storyline, and in pretty much every form of the Pinocchio story, both Pinocchio and Geppetto get eaten by this whale, and they have to create a fire in some scenarios and, you know, use the smoke to make the whale cough, they get out, something along those lines. So it stands to reason that in the Ruby storyline, the way to deal with this whale is going to be from the inside. And there's a couple of different ways that this could happen. One is Ruby using the Silver Eyes. Now, we saw at the end of Volume 6, when she tried to use the Silver Eyes against the Leviathan, that her Silver Eyes are not strong enough to take out a Grim of the size of the Leviathan, let alone the size of this whale, which is the largest Grim that we have ever seen in the Ruby series thus far. I still think there's something much larger coming down the road when we get to, you know, the end of the series, the final battle against Salem, which this in Volume 8 is not the final battle with Salem, so we will have to see what comes later on. But with the whale right now, what Ruby could do is possibly petrify a portion of it. I made a video discussing Grim Biology on its own, and we might find out more about Grim Biology when we see the inside of this whale. Is it that Grim just have a core, or there's just open space on the inside? We know that some Grim bleed 
indeed that they have, you know, something pumping this blood throughout their body. Potentially, some Grimm, like the whale, might have a heart or organs or something like that. And if Ruby is able to petrify the Grimm's heart, then that would stand to reason that any living being would be killed by that. And the Grimm are living, they just don't possess a soul. So there's some, you know, technicalities with that, but the Grimm are living beings. They die when enough damage is dealt to them, and if their vital organs or vital parts of their body are hit, they die. Like the Nukalavi. When its head was cut off, it died. It screamed in pain when, you know, parts of its body were cut off, when it was taking damage, etc. So Grimm have or share a lot of characteristics with other living beings, and that would stand to reason that if their heart or their core or whatever it is that makes them tick, keeps them alive, is destroyed or damaged, then that would do the trick. I think that's what's going to happen in this scenario using Ruby, but since Pinocchio and Geppetto are the ones that get swallowed, then this could be the time for Penny to activate those maiden powers. And with that being the case, then, well, that'll do it. Penny just using her maiden powers would be able to destroy at least some of the inner organs of the Grimm, obviously not the entire Grimm from the outside as a whole, but if she destroyed the heart or the brain, like this glowing yellow portion in the head of the whale, if there is a core instead of, you know, an organ or things like that, that would probably be where its core is. And if they attacked that part, like I said, if they excalibered the staff of creation into its forehead, into this glowing portion, that could possibly destroy the Grimm. But if Penny was able to attack that from the inside, or Ruby was able to petrify that from the inside, that would make a lot of sense as to killing the whale. But there is another scenario that they could use the Staff of Creation for, for attacking the whale from the outside. I made a video as well about something that I called Silver Resonance, that the Silver Eyes, since they came from the God of Light or were theorized to originate from the God of Light by Maria, well, since the relics as well came from the God of Light, everything is supposed to be related to the God of Light's power in those two categories, they might be able to resonate with one another. Ruby might be able to use the Staff of Creation like a battery for her Silver Eyes and amp them up to the point where she might be able to um, petrify the entire whale, or at least part of it, or deal damage against Salem, maybe she'll lose control, maybe weaken it enough so that Atlas could be used to destroy the whale by slamming it into it, etc. There's a number of different ways that this could work out. Similarly, the Staff of Creation could also be used as a battery for Penny, and she could just unleash a massive Kamehameha similar to how she did in Volume 7, except amped up with magic and the power of creation to counteract the destruction that is the Grimm. There's a number of different ways that this could play out with just these few characters, between Ruby, Penny, and the Staff of Creation, using Atlas or otherwise. So this is how I kind of see the whale actually dying, or the ways that they could actually defeat it, because let's be real here. The Atlas military itself, as the army that we saw floating above Atlas, unless Atlas can, you know, have some giant railgun or something that they could power with the Staff of Creation to deal enough damage to a Grim of that size, I don't think the military itself can do a thing against it. At least in terms of killing the whale or dealing enough damage to even injure the whale. I just don't think the military has that firepower at this time, but that doesn't mean the military won't be extremely useful in the battle ahead, especially when it comes to dealing with the hordes of other Grimm that are accompanying this giant whale and likely stored within it. Because a Grimm of that size, I imagine that it's probably a cargo carrier of sorts for a majority of Salem's army. We saw multiple other Grimm flying alongside the whale, but I'm guessing there's a ton more stored inside that are going to pop out of its mouth once it gets closer to Atlas. And the military is going to be very useful in dealing with these hordes of other Grimm that are going to overrun the city. Mantle, on the other hand, might be in a bit of a dire straits, but at least when it comes to the Grimm in the air, well, the military can certainly help with that. But there is another thing that the military might be able to help with when it comes to the whale. And that is grounding it, because currently the whale is flying towards Atlas, and a flying target, even though it is moving fairly slowly as far as Grimm fly, as fast as the whale was moving at the end of Volume 7, it's still a harder target to hit than if the whale was grounded. And, you know, if they are able to beach this whale, then they might be able to deal with it a little bit easier. But when we look at the whale and the way in which it's flying, it's not exactly clear how it's able to fly. 
If we look at those wings, they are very small when it compared to the overall size of the whale's body. Other grim that we've seen able to fly when it comes to the manticores, the sphinxes, or even the pteryxes that were introduced in Volume 7, their wings are much more proportionally sized compared to their overall body size. And the whale is not. Those wings are very tiny, so it's likely that the wings themselves aren't what's actually keeping it airborne. There are a couple of other possibilities for that, though. We see that there are purple crystals protruding from the whale's body, both above and below it. These could be some form of gravity dust crystal. Now, gravity dust crystals are black, and these are purple, so they're likely not just pure gravity dust crystals. They could be something that only arises naturally in the realm of darkness that Salem has her home base in, or this could be some other form of dust that Salem has worked on over a number of years, has been able to manipulate types of dust or something along those lines to include gravity dust and something else, possibly adding, you know, an elemental Thing to the whale, because we've seen other large grim have elemental attacks. The Sea Fei Long has had an electricity breath. The Leviathan has had a flame breath. So the whale might also have some attacks on its own on top of that. And if that's the case, then Atlas might just be screwed right from the get-go, or at least be dealt a heavy blow right away. That'll have to wait and see, but if it is gravity dust crystals that are keeping the whale floating, then Atlas might be able to do something against that because currently they are the leading kingdom in dust technology. With the amount of experimentation that they've had with different types of dust, they might have found a way to disrupt dust or even just disrupt gravity dust in general if they could get a mechanism or some certain type of dust, possibly other gravity dust crystals close enough to it to counteract the gravity dust and possibly bring this whale down. That's something that I could see possible that the Atlas military might be able to achieve. Or, again, if the wings are keeping it floating, they could clip the wings in some way, shape, or form. But, again, I don't think it's the wings. The dust crystals seem more likely. But there's also the possibility that it could just be magic of Salem's that is keeping this whale floating. I don't see that Salem would give a portion of her magic permanently to this whale. I feel like she would keep that all for herself, especially considering Grimm can die. But... Still, it is possible that Salem could be using her magic to keep the whale floating. Though again, I don't think she would be using her power or depleting it to keep this whale floating, but she's immortal. Maybe her magic is immortal as well and it just doesn't deplete, which would make her extremely overpowered. There's a lot of things to consider when it comes to this, but if it is Salem supplying the whale with power, then maybe the military might be able to get Salem off the whale and that would do it. Again, doubt that's the case, I'm leaning towards more the dust crystal side, or that there's something inside the whale that is keeping it floating. I made a theory previously that maybe the pool of creation, or the fountain of life, is inside of this whale. That Salem, knowing where the realm of light and the realm of darkness were way back when, in the first generation of humanity, she knew where the realm of light is currently, where the fountain of life actually is, was able to find it and use its power to make a grim of this size. Now, a lot of people, you know, were thinking that, well, the powers of creation and destruction would completely cancel each other out. Yeah, that's exactly what Salem thought. By first being thrown into the Fountain of Life and then into the Pool of Darkness, she thought they would surely cancel each other out. But they didn't. Salem became an immortal being who desired destruction. They amplified each other, or added to each other, creating, well, Salem. So if Salem created something from the Pools of Darkness, this giant Grimm, and added the essence of life, or the essence of creation to it, then instead of just outright destroying it, maybe it would actually enhance it to this size. So maybe there would be some way of magic disruption, or if it's the case that magic is actually keeping this whale floating, then the military probably wouldn't be able to do anything against it anyways, but just hearing my ramblings, you can see that there's a lot of things to consider when it comes to this whale, how it is going to be dealt with, because it's going to have to be dealt with in some way, shape, or form, or it's really going to cause a lot of problems in Volume 8, and Atlas just won't really have much of a chance of winning. But overall, I've rambled enough. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Do you think that some of the scenarios I suggested when it comes to Ruby using her Silver Eyes, Penny using her Maiden Powers, attacking the Grim from the inside, or using the Staff of Creation to either ram Atlas into the Whale, or amplify Ruby or Penny's powers to some extent to be able to deal some sort of blow or damage against this Whale? Or do you think that the military is going to be useful in beaching this Whale? Or I'd love to know what your thoughts are if you have other 
ideas outside of the ones I suggested or if you think the ones I suggested are accurate, etc. Let me know down in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to subscribe, join the Guild of the Eternal Flame. There's plenty more Ruby content coming out over the summer before the dawn releases next week on July 21st. There's the Phoenix Festival Tournament coming after that and there's the Fairy Tales of Remnant novel coming in September as well. There's a lot to look forward to before Volume 8 even gets here, so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that as well. Make sure that if you guys want to, you join our Discord server, link in the description below, tweet me at PhoenixKnight7, and I'll see you guys in the next video.